Hmm? Whenever I want. <laughs> Apparently, 250, but I can wait.
Um, hi, everyone. So let's start with this presentation. Uh, today, we'll talk about uh, push versus pull. Uh, and we will discuss about a new module that we um, created. It's called GraphQL in Twig. Um, my name is Sasha Nikolic, and I worked as a software developer for Amazing Labs in Zurich, uh, Switzerland. And I come from Slovenia, which is not Slovakia, but it's in Europe. Uh, and you can find me on drupal.org and on Twitter or uh, on my email address. Uh, so the agenda for today is uh, first we'll discuss about the current push status in Drupal 8, how the data flow works, um, then we'll define a problem that we as front-enders uh, usually face. Um, then we'll talk about really quickly about decoupling Drupal, uh, about GraphQL, the basic core module, and then about GraphQL in Twig. Um, we will show two examples. One will be a gallery uh, with simple images, and one will be a simple block. And at the end, we'll talk a bit about the benefits and the things that we need to keep in mind while um, using this module. Um, so let me start by telling you a story that happened a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I was at a dinner with a friend and he was asking me questions that he wants to get involved in the web development and he wants to build websites and he's uh, trying different stuff. He wants to either use Drupal or Joomla or WordPress and then he started asking me, how is Drupal? How is, how is site building works? How, what is Drupal core? What are modules? And then we, we started getting into details and he was like, oh, but what are views? What are blocks? It's so different. It's so difficult to grasp for beginners. And then uh, we went into it even more details. We started looking at our templates and we just saw these variables and uh, we just like thought, okay, um, we see the variables. Like for example, there's a content variable. It's really hard to debug uh, because if you just do dump content, you just, your site explodes and you, you face a white screen. Um, and the Drupal basically serves just um, to push data uh, through the pre-processing and processing through the template layer. Uh, and it's like a black box for us front-enders. Um, so, and then we went in even into further um, details, like how to actually build an image gallery um, where we just need thumbnails, we need a big image, and we need some description for the images. Um, so the creation steps would be as follows. First, we need to choose some modules that we want to use, then some uh, libraries or JavaScript libraries. Uh, for example, we chose uh, Slick um, and some library for the pop-ups. Then we need to define some image styles for the thumbnail and for the big images. Uh, we need to create views if you want to sort or filter our data. Uh, we need to place the uh, view into a block and either reference the view inside our node and all this kind of stuff. And at the end, we need to add classes to our view and style the view so it's complicated. It's like seven, eight steps just to create a basic image gallery. Uh, what is also really important that is that if we are using this kind of um, jQuery or JavaScript libraries, we have a predefined HTML structure. So in this example, we are um, using the Slick library. Um, and here we can see that we are just, we just need three kinds of data. We need the URL for the big images, we need the alt uh, attribute, and we need the URL for the thumbnails, and that's it. So we just need three data. And if we want to get this data from the normal Drupal rendered array, uh, it's really difficult. And uh, we get all these extra div wrappers, we get a lot of uh, extra classes that we don't need, and it's really hard to style. Uh, so we got an idea, like why, don't, why do we always need to push the data from Drupal to our uh, templates? Why don't we just pull the data that we need? So we just need URLs and alt uh, attributes and that would be really easy to use. Um, so here is where decoupled Drupal comes into play. Um, 
as we mostly, most of us know, um, the decoupled Drupal works as follows. So we have the uh, Drupal as a content service uh, in the backend, and we expose our content either through REST API, JSON API, or GraphQL, uh, and then we just fetch the data that uh, is provided through these APIs. Uh, and the front end is totally up to us, so we have this separation of concerns between back enders and front enders. Um, and yeah, we experimented with this at Amazing Labs, and we really love it. Like, so we just jumped right on it, and we are riding the wave. Um, yeah, this is our Scrum team. <laughs> um, but this is not always suitable. Um, so for example, for some kind of projects, we need to ask ourselves a lot of questions when we define uh, what kind of um, results do we, do we need or do we want to achieve? Uh, do we need one or multiple experiences? Uh, it is a Drupal just serving as a site or a repository? Can we expose data through this um, um, uh, for this site? Or what are the editorial needs? What is the security? Um, what kind of performance do we want to achieve? But at, at the end, everything comes down uh, to the budget. Mm. Uh, you can read more about it in the Drupal, in the Dries uh, blog post in the link below. Um, so a way in between the standard Drupal uh, rendering and uh, figuring out the data and the d fully decoupled Drupal is the progressively decoupled Drupal, uh, which is a really cool balanced approach between uh, fully decoupled, uh, full stack, thingy and a Drupal approach uh, where we can use any JavaScript framework in the front end and uh, where we just serve the data that we need from the Drupal uh, and we populate it um, all together. So, and this offers us good pr compromises either for uh, editorial needs or for front enders, back enders, and it's a really cool experience for everyone, I guess. Uh, and this is also where GraphQL in Twig comes into play. So uh, the GraphQL, if for you, uh, for those who don't know yet, it's just a query language for APIs and a runtime for fulfilling these queries with your existing data. This is the official statement that you can find on the GraphQL uh, website. And there is also already a stable version for Drupal, uh, so you can uh, experiment with it and please provide any feedback for that. Um, what GraphQL brings is a really good under and understandable data structure and description. Uh, we can expose any data, data that we want and this will build our schema that we can easily fetch through our uh, GraphQL uh, queries. Um, what is really good is compared to the other APIs, there is no over and under fetching, so we don't, we don't get any extra data or any less data that uh, we need. So we specify what we wanna, uh, what kind of data we want to get and uh, we just fetch that data without any extra, um, extra data or wrappers or anything. Um, it offers really powerful development tools like the GraphQL Explorer. Um, it has uh, suggestions, it has the documentation, um, it has the help on the right side, so it's really cool. Uh, so let's go back to the gallery example. Um, as we said before, why do we push data to this um, predefined HTML structure? We just need to pull what we need. Um, and let's just jump right into it. So uh, the first step that uh, we need to do when we are building the image gallery in this example is to include the GraphQL query at the top. Um, this is still a bit weird because it looks like a comment, but it actually works. So we need to wrap it in the um, hashes around. Um, and then here uh, we are using Fractal um, as the atomic design approach. Uh, and we are calling at the bottom the gallery component and we are passing the whole data that we get from the GraphQL query uh, directly down there. Um, and the three dots gallery, uh, this means that we are calling a fragment that is defined inside the gallery component. So the next slide shows the whole GraphQL query. 
Um, so we can see at the top, we are uh, calling the gallery fragment on the node itself. Um, the node ID is 54, as we see on the left button. And then inside our gallery fragment, we are querying the media image that we uh, defined that we defined previously in our um, site building part. Um, so the media image has two image styles, the thumbnails and the big images. Uh, and we just fetch the URL. Um, and on these images, we also fetch the alt attribute. Uh, we get all the data back and it's easy, really easy to put this data into our um, component. So here we see we have two sections. One is for the gallery for the big images and the second one is for the um, thumbnails. Uh, so we are looping over all the items that we get through the, our GraphQL query and then we are um, setting the data um, as needed. We are also calling a figure component here uh, and we are passing down the caption and the image URL. And this is our final product, actually. This is the gallery that we are, uh, that we saw in the previous slides. So let's look at another block example. Um, so mo like the Drupal uh, usually comes with a predefined block that is called powered by Drupal. Um, and we can actually overwrite this template and just output some other stuff in there. So for example, let's output the user name um, and put it in there. Uh, this is really easy. So we are querying the user by ID, um, ID one, for example, that would be an administrator. And uh, we can also query um, the current user and put that into our template. Uh, this is really easy and we are actually overwriting the whole functionality of this block by just writing a GraphQL query at the top. What are the benefits, are you asking? So there are quite a few. Actually, the first one and the main uh, reason that we are using it is the separation of concerns. So the back-enders and the front-enders can work completely separately. So the front-enders can do can implement the design and the front end components. Um, and if the <coughs> GraphQL schema is predefined, we already know that we can mock that data um, beforehand and then just implement the front end part separately without any side building, basically. Uh, rapid product iterations, um, that's also connected with the site building part. So as we, as we could see with the gallery um, example, we just totally skipped the views configuration and the blocks and all these parts in between. So we just got two part, two or three steps actually. And uh, this provides us a really faster iterations and the customer can give us feedback much quicker. Um, yes, we can get exactly what we need, so no more extra wrappers. We can get uh, exactly the URL directly from the GraphQL query. Um, for example, with a JSON API or REST API, would, we would also get other data that is not needed for us, for example, the image width, image height, and things like that. So this is a really good benefit. Um, it's a really strongly typed system, so it uh, provides us with the data um, like if it's, if we are querying a string, if we are getting um, an integer, a boolean, so we got, we exactly know what we are getting and what we are querying for. Um, in the example before, we could actually implement the gallery that extends, uh, that is a part of uh, a superior part. So for example, we would have uh, Flickr gallery or Instagram gallery or media gallery that also implements videos. So this would be a part of a, a bigger interface actually. Um, we can have fully con uh, full control of our um, template structure. So uh, again, in the gallery, we saw that we had a predefined HTML structure and we can just put data in there. 
Um, yes, for the front enders, it's really easy to reason about the data flow. So we are just querying what we need and we are getting that. No more pre-processing and processing. That's really cool. The tooling is really good. Uh, the GraphQL Explorer is really useful, so we encourage to use that. Um, even if you don't know much about the HTML, the Drupal website structure, how the fields work, how the media is nested in between inside and things like that, you can easily uh, figure that out uh, through the suggestions in the GraphQL Explorer. And last but not, but not least, it's well suited for atomic design. Uh, so we are using it in conjunction with uh, either Fractal or um, some other uh, atomic design patterns, uh, either with React or not. There are a couple of things that we need to keep in mind. So the configuration logic moves to templates. That means that all the sorting and filtering can be done inside our templates. So this can be either a plus or a minus. It depends if you want to click around or uh, if you're familiar with the um, Drupal configurations and if you are more of a clicky guy or geeky guy, if you wanna write your logic inside your templates or not. Um, it's not fully covered yet. So for, for example, for config entities, uh, this is not yet supported, but we will find a way to do it. Uh, we also saw that the syntax highlighting, for example, in uh, VS Code or in PHP Storm is not, does not yet work, so it might be confusing at first if you see just a piece of GraphQL query at the top that is commented out, so you would think it doesn't work, but this works currently and this is how it is. Um, and yeah, we would suggest that we don't mix that much um, the current Drupal workflow uh, with the GraphQL. Um, and we would just use it when needed. So when we have uh, some static data or where we have some predefined structure that we just need to put some data in there. Um, so we are currently using it for the header, for the footer, for the image gallery, for example, for the menu, uh, which is which where the data usually doesn't change that much, or the HTML, HTML structure. Um, so all the credits for this module and the GraphQL in general goes to Philip Melab and Sebastian Simpson. They are two of the main uh, contributors and uh, I would really, really like to thank them. And if you have any questions, uh, I would be really happy to follow up on them. Please use the microphone. Uh, using this approach, have you had to uh, create some kind of an isomorphic app, maybe using React? And if you haven't, is it even possible to do that? I'm not sure I understand the question, but this approach is is not fully decoupled, so we we can basically just provide the data to our GraphQL uh, to our uh, tweak templates and then style it uh, with normal CSS and SAS. What I'm asking template. is if you have the ability to, um, you know, use something like React, right, on the on the front end, mm -hmm. and you need to create it isomorphically, meaning that the React components render on the server side and on the client side. Right, they hydrate to the client side. Is it something that can be accommodated with this approach? Mm. Not sure how to answer that. Hi, thank you for your presentation. So one of the reasons, I'm thinking out loud, one of the reasons why we use Twig is to um, 
get rid of data manipulational code or queries from the template files. So just to make the template files clean so we don't ever go to the database and grab data because it's a template file and we should use it as a template file. And what you're, s uh, what you're suggesting is really tempting for me as a front-end developer, but isn't that exactly what we are doing? You're actually going to the database and doing a query in the Twig file, and um, I would like to try it out um, uh, in a dark room <laughs> uh, when nobody sees me, but um, <laughs> I wonder what kind of um, uh, performance issues could this cause? And did you ever find anything that would tell you not to do this? Because I would, li I would really, really like to try it out. Um, it currently works for us pretty well. Uh, we had some caching issues at the beginning, um, but we are just using the normal Drupal rendered array uh, through the processing. So that is actually fixed now. Um, I didn't experience any any big bigger fallbacks or any bigger issues actually. It works straight out of the box. Uh, we just uh, we just had some issues or we just needed to extend the functionality with the responsive image styles. Uh, we wrote some custom code for that and we are actually testing it in one of our projects. So um, yeah, there were a couple of missing things that we need to we needed to play around with. So. So the graph QL language, does that reach back to the database and get the data? No, it actually queries the... Um, the schema. The schema, okay. Yeah. Then okay, then I misunderstood what graph QL did, then I will try it out. Thank you very much. Cool. Um, yeah, kind of a related question. You had mentioned that in many cases you're not using, I think you said you're not using views, but you're directly doing the query. Is that the case for basically every kind of view you might have used? Otherwise, or are you still using views for specific types of queries, and this is a replacement for certain types of views? Yes, we are We're using this just for simple views where we don't need much filtering or sorting or this kind of stuff. Um, it works pretty, pretty good, and it's quite basic, so. And are you also using this with like views that have contextual filters, or? or uh, we are using contextual fi filters and this kind of stuff still with you views, yeah. I uh, just wanted to follow up on the question about uh, the isomorphic JavaScript or being fully decoupled. So this is something we have solved in other projects where we decided to fully decouple and uh, we have on our GitHub, we have some sample projects that help to, to build an isomorphic React-based uh, application with the GraphQL module. But in this case, so we we really wanted to d to not do the heavy lifting, uh, which is a trade-off. So we don't have the the benefits of an isomorphic JavaScript app, but we have still the benefits of leveraging React uh, w within or just um, like simplifying the template. So there's there's a lot of different use cases where we see that GraphQL and React can be of benefit, and this is. Yeah, this is like a, s a smaller approach to it. Hi, uh, thanks for the presentation. Uh, so one quick question is, uh, is it easy to apply this to the existing templates? Like if we are uh, pulling in some variables from the pre-processing hooks and all, is it just easy to replace those with the graphical QL? And, or are there any steps that we have to take? Yes, it should work basically out of the box. You just need to install the GraphQL Twig uh, module and uh, write your GraphQL queries okay. and play around with it. So. Okay, thank you. Yep. Is there an easy way to debug it where you can see what's inside of the basic query or subqueries? Uh, yes, um, we implemented a custom feature for that. So when we're in a node, we have a overlay that says GraphQL query, which basically uh, if you click it, it brings you to the GraphQL Explorer, uh, and then you get the data passed into it, and you see exactly the GraphQL query that you are uh, writing down. 
Um, and then you can debug that inside the GraphQL Explorer. Okay, thanks. Yep. Have you um, tried to actually use this to fully decouple in the sense that you have one Drupal system that has the, is the content repository and you have another Drupal system with doing rendering from GraphQL that's calling back to the repository site. That would be an interesting use case. Yeah, I didn't try that yet, no. <laughs> would be interesting. If you do, let us know on uh, the issue. <laughs> so you mentioned issue.